Have you over here? Yeah, the, uh, the idea is, I think this first one, because of layout, we're going to hit this rock wall. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd rather shift layout, just like, well, just for this one, yeah. shift it this way and have a full 2x10, right. as opposed to trimming Absolutely. it and having like a 2x6. I agree. Just why not. Um, here are the screws, and it has the correct driver, okay? And we use joist hangers. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used these before? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the idea is that once we figure out where square is based on this rock wall, then you and I on this first one especially, because uh, I, you know, it's, uh, yeah, we'll uh, work on this because I think it'll set on the rock wall over there enough to support it. And we'll have to straighten it up. We'll have to at least get a screw in here and then pinch this, get the other screw in there, and then this is holding it. And then we can attend to that. And then we have more screws to put in, and then we have screws to put in, different screws, to actually put through the uh, joist into the rim joist. Okay. That's the idea behind this thing. It's called a uh, joist hanger. Uh, they have nails, but I figured this way I didn't have to get out either a hammer or um, a, uh, an area of any sort. <laughs>
and Ethernet and all that, so that's technically electrical. And I have some reframing of some walls, just plussing up the framing, adding to, making sure that my drywall numbers will work. And then after that, and the steam heat is taken care of, and the electric is ready to go, uh, subfloor, of course, once I know that I don't have to be in the pit anymore. And then once that's done, then I can attend to the ceiling, and that'll be some demo and some rewiring. And um, yeah, joy, love it. Hey folks, Steve here. How you doing, sports fans? All right, what I've got going on at the moment in our wonderful demo and put back of the porch that became a three-season, that became a four-season room by the time we bought it. It would have been a four-season room for probably 70 years. I have to deal with the heat now as far as, you know, the, the rough end, if you will, for the heat. And we're running steam heat, so what do I have? Right there is the uh, steam heat that comes from the house proper. And at the moment, I have it capped off simply because with that, there, that's where all the steam would go if we had the heat on. So I capped it off for the moment. But I am going to relocate... Our original radiator sat somewhere right in here because that was an external door to an outside porch, and that, that's a great place for the heat. But now we're able to actually move our heat back into this cavity. That'll get boxed in with a 2x4, 2x4 chase. Uh, that is our house vent. And so, therefore, I have the luxury of moving the radiator back over that way, and so I'm going to be plumbing that through this joist, through that joist, and then coming up with our valve system. With that, this joist right here is not actually installed. I have the joist hanger for that but it's not actually pinned into the rim joist at this point. So with a hammer, I can tap this up and I can actually remove this joist, which will allow me to get a wrench on the pipe that has to come through here to get the 90 on, and then I'll have to drill a hole in this at the proper location and then put this back down on, uh, you know, in a certain way to make sure that I can actually get the, uh, the 90 around it. And I will be reducing from that two inch to inch and a half pipe. There's no reason to run two inch at that point. Uh, this joist is permanently installed. All I need to do is just line this hole up with that hole. That's not a problem through measurements, get through that joist. And then I'll have a length of pipe there, 90 up. And then I'll have a, uh, a nipple there, which will actually then go on to the radiator valve, which is, which is a, uh, just a union coupling at that point at the base of the radiator. I'm going to offset the radiator, radiator enough from the wall so it's easy to clean behind and I can trim behind it uh, and all of that, although I'll trim before I put the radiator in. So that's what I'm doing today. I have to measure for pipe, call it in, have it uh, cut, threaded, go pick it up, and then see about installing it. And then after that, it's on to wiring. Welcome to the next episode. I'm Steve Spencer. I'll be your host. So I am working with my steam system today. So, you know, our boiler and all of the leads out to our various, uh, in the end, 10 radiators, uh, three of which are new to the addition. Sorry about the noise of the dehumidifier. All right, so what have I got? So steam line comes in, goes up. One of those goes to the immediate room above and then the second floor above that. And then it elbows off, comes up, heads through there, and that the line that is in my porch cavity that I am extending to put that radiator back in. For that, I will be, of course, sealing the uh, pipe joints. And to seal the pipe joint, I will be using simply this Do It product. I read the explicit instructions. This is apparently some pretty good stuff. You can run jet fuel uh, through uh, pipes that have this sealant and uh, gasoline, kerosene, all kinds of solvents, uh, air, helium, hydrogen, da 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 da, and steam. It's good up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit down to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Steam is not going to get 400 degrees in this system. It of course starts at 212. Steam is always at 212 or above in a normal pressure system. And with that, this is more than adequate to seal those joints. All right, well, get to it.
temporary for now, cap it so my, I can turn my heat back on, and then I'll have to ascertain floor level, radiator, and if this stub, uh, this six inch nickel is adequate or if it needs to grow or shrink in order to make sure that the uh, valve and union actually work on the radiator on the new floor, which is an inch and a half up from this, three quarter subfloor, three quarter hardwood. So that's the plan. I'll need to get a cap today before I turn the heat back on. Temporary is that I did not pipe dope it. Any leakage right now, no big deal. And it probably won't leak. I snug that up a bit. These threads are supposed to be designed to where as you snug this in, it'll actually create its own airtight, watertight seal. No one ever trusts that, I don't think, because we all use pipe, pipe dope or Teflon tape or something like that. But in the end, this should be fine just for the temporary time that I'll have this uh, stubbed up and not permanent. Thank you very much for sticking with me, folks. If you will, like and subscribe. And have a great day uh, because I know you deserve it, right? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Y'all take care.